Let us prepare our hearts to worship God. Uh, will you all join me in the call to worship? You'll find it in your bulletins. Jesus sent forth the twelve into the world. <clears throat> As God's people, we are sent forth into the world. Jesus gave authority and power to those whom he sent. As God's people, we have authority and power as we go. Jesus instructed them to proclaim that the kingdom is near. As God's people, we proclaim the kingdom of heaven has come near. Let us worship God. The king of love, my shepherd, is whose goodness faileth never. I nothing lack if I am his, and he is mine forever. And he is mine forever. Where streams of living water flow, my ransomed soul he leadeth. Where the burden pastures grow with food celestial feed and never failing 
ruler of my heart, everlasting, lover of my soul on the mountain high or in the valley low, the king of love my shepherd is, the king of love my shepherd is. Lost and foolish, off I strayed, but yet in love he sought me, and on his shoulder gently laid, and oh, rejoicing brought me. In death's dark vale I fear no ill, with thee, dear Lord, beside me. Thy rod and staff, my comfort still. Thy cross before to guide me. Never failing, ruler of my heart. Everlasting, lover of my soul. On the mountain high or in the valley low, the king of love, my shepherd is. The king of love, my shepherd is. Oh. So through all the length of days, thy goodness faileth never. Good shepherd, may I sing your praise within your house forever. Within your house forever. Jesus says, are you tired, burned out, worn out? Come to me. He promises rest. When we come before God and confess our sin, we are not only handing over those burdens, we are asking Jesus to give us rest. In this time of confession, allow him to take those burdens away. Let us confess our sin together, first out loud and then in a time of silence. Let us pray. Wow. Things are changing all around me. I have a new degree. I am interviewing for new positions. My first child has graduated. My last child has finished school. A new baby is on the way. There is leaving college. My sister is headed to the army. I'm facing retirement. My grandchild is getting married. My parents are not doing well. I am feeling so much older this year. Changes all around me and changes within me. Lord, with all these changes, I confess, I don't know where I am going. The pathways are moving even as I try to follow them. I was sure I knew the way, but the road I plan to take is blocked. To be truthful, I don't know how to fit you into all this change. Forgive me, Lord, for seeing life only through my nervous eyes. Open my soul 
that I may see the world and my place in it through your eyes as well. Open my heart that I may know, regardless of what happens in life, that my greatest comfort is being your child. Amen. Hear the good news. By grace we are redeemed, in spite of our selfishness, in spite of scores we have to settle, in spite of our stubbornness and arrogance, in spite of ourselves. We are forgiven, we are loved, and we are beloved children of God. Friends, believe the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven and restored to new life. And living in that forgiveness, let us join together in our joyful response, number 825. We will sing this two times through. Through his death, Jesus demolished all the things that divide us, the walls we put up to keep others out, walls of hatred, walls of fear, walls of pride. In his resurrection, Jesus proclaimed peace, peace to those both near and far, friends, enemies, neighbors, and rivals. Through him, God dwells among us, and we live into his peace. So may the peace of God be with you all and also with you. So now will we get up and please, uh, you're welcome to greet each other and, and uh, give them the peace of Christ. That's okay. <laughs> Okay, now, giving of tithes and offerings. Giving requires us to place something in the hands of someone else. When we give an offering, we place what we have into God's loving hands. Knowing this, we ask to give freely, 
out of love, just as God did when we were given Jesus Christ. God gave out of love, so we shall. So shall we also. Will the ushers please come forward to receive the offering? Let us pray. Gracious God, receive now our offerings, which is just a portion of the blessings you have given to us. Use these gifts and use each one of us as a living offering to you for your glory and for your work of healing and wholeness in our community and in the world. Amen. As we prepare to go to God in prayer, it is our joy that we are able to share with one another in our joys and concerns. Today we will uh, be especially praying for the farmers who are in the fields, praying for those who are um, going on vacation. We will be praying for friends who are not feeling well and for continued health concerns. Let us pray. Loving God, we come to you with our prayers. Hear us as we pray for the sick. We pray for those with chronic illness, for those who have life-threatening conditions, and for those with inadequate medical care. Bring the healing we need. Hear us as we pray for all who are hungry. We pray for those who live in regions of drought and famine, for those who cannot afford nutritious food, and for the vulnerable who are not adequately fed. Hear us as we pray for those who grieve. We pray for those who mourn a loved one, 
for those whose communities are no more, for those who cannot imagine a joyful future. Give us comfort to restore hope. Hear us as we pray for this community, for the joys and concerns shared in our congregation for this day. We give thanks for being able to gather together in a safe place to worship. We pray for those who are in the fields. We pray for those who are preparing for vacation. We pray for friends who are not feeling well. We pray for Michelle. We pray for healing for Rhonda's legs. And we pray for those things that are weighing on our hearts today that we are unable to speak aloud. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear us as we pray for the world's victims. We pray for those who are caught in violence, for those who are trapped in others' self-seeking, and for those who suffer from neglect. Grant us freedom from all evil. God of the poor and the poor in spirit, we pray for your help against all that oppresses as we look forward to the kingdom that you have promised and are bringing even now through Jesus Christ. Loving God, as we prepare to hear your word read and proclaimed, send your Holy Spirit to open our eyes and our ears. May we find rest and restoration in the hearing of scripture. May we be empowered to follow your son, in whose name we pray. Amen. The gospel lesson for today is taken from the book of, <clears throat> excuse me, book of Luke, chapter one through, chapter five, verses one through eleven. One day, as Jesus was standing by the lake of Gen Genesaret, that's also known as the Sea of Galilee. The people were crowding around him and listening to the word of God. He saw at the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Simon asked, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything, but because you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done this, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them, and they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knee and said, Go away from me, Lord, I am a sinful man. For he and all of his companions were astonished at the catch of the fish they had taken. And so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Simon's partners. Then Jesus said to Simon, Don't be afraid. From now on, you will fish for people. So they pulled their boats up on shore, left everything, and followed him. That is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This is one of my favorite passages in the Bible. I remember that it was one of the very first texts that I heard during my orientation at Dubuque Seminary. We spoke at length about it in our New Testament class. This was in the Revised Common Lectionary for the Sunday after my ordination, my first Sunday as Reverend Jennifer. And this morning, I was reminded that three years ago today, uh, Caleb and I were sitting on a boat in the Sea of Galilee. We sang with friends and colleagues, O oh Lord, with your eyes you have searched me, and while smiling have called out my name. Now my boat's left on the shoreline behind me. Now with you, I will seek other seas. 
Indeed, this is a story that radically changes the disciples' lives. And once again, I am reminded of our sabbatical theme here. In the verses that are leading up to this chapter, Jesus is in Capernaum, a city in Galilee, where he had spoken with authority in the synagogue, where he had cast out demons, healed Simon's mother-in-law. At this point, he was searching for a quiet place, and so he departed and went into a deserted place. Jesus does this a lot, actually, where he just gets up and leaves. He finds a deserted place to pray and be restored and to be filled up before the next leg of the journey. The crowds in Capernaum were looking for him, and they wanted Jesus to stay with them, to not go on to the next city, but to stay in the same place. Sometimes it's easier to stay put, to not risk the journey, to stay in the boat. And sure, there may be times when that is necessary. Jesus says right before this chapter, I must proclaim the good news of the kingdom of God to the other cities also, for I was sent for this purpose. Jesus knew he couldn't stay, but had to move forward. And so he goes to the lake of Gennesaret, where the crowds continue to push on him to teach, to hear him speak. And when he is ready to teach, he gets into a boat belonging to some local fishermen. These poor men had been out all night, and this was not easy work. We think of fishing now as a relaxing pastime that you enjoy on a hot summer day with a cold glass of tea and your friends around you laughing and telling stories. It would have been hot, which is why they would have been fishing at night, but it was anything but relaxing. They would throw these huge nets into the water, wait a few moments, pull them up, and then repeat the whole process again. It was hard labor. It was exhausting. And when they were finally cleaning up and getting ready to go home, Jesus asks them to push out a little way from the shore so that he can teach. Now we give the disciples a hard time because so often they seem as if they don't get what it is that Jesus is teaching. But we can all imagine that the last thing these poor fishermen wanted to do is to get back into the boats they had just left to take this guy out so that he could teach another crowd. But these fishermen, these disciples, these men left everything when Jesus called and invited them to follow. It's interesting that it is when they catch such a large amount of fish that it's then that they want to follow Jesus. It's like waiting for a sign. When I was a super senior in college, that's what the cool kids call those of us who took the five-year plan. I was trying to figure out what I was going to do with my life after graduation. In ministry, we call this discerning the call. I was working at a Presbyterian church in town, so I was receiving the newsletter from the Presbytery. And it so happened that the University of Dubuque Seminary was having the Exploring the Call Conference for those interested in attending seminary, which happened to fall during my spring break. I called my parents and I told them that I wanted to take a trip during my senior spring break. And after a very, very long pause, my mom asked, where? They both laughed as I told them, Dubuque, Iowa, in March. It's not exactly the spring break you think of. But as I was preparing for the conference, I, I prayed for a sign that this indeed, that this was where I was supposed to be, what I was supposed to be doing with my life. I prayed for a lightning bolt moment, a hallelujah chorus, clouds parting and rays of light beaming down, the neon sign flashing, this is your sign moment to make sure that I was on the right path. So I went to the conference, I attended every seminar and session that they had, and I felt nothing out of the ordinary. Sure, UDTS was a beautiful place. The professors were all pastoral and very caring, but I didn't have that feeling, that absolute moment of clarity. And then in the last session entitled, Exploring Your Call, one of, the one of the professors said, 
So many of us wait to have this lightning bolt, hallelujah chorus sign that we are supposed to do this. And I remember my eyes opened very wide and I thought, was that it? <laughs> Did I miss it? <laughs> These disciples weren't anticipating a sign, but they got one. As they followed Jesus' call to drop their nets into the deep water, they caught so many fish that their nets were breaking. They found deep faith in the deep water. As they returned to shore, they left everything. Their homes, their families, their fish, their boats. And they followed Jesus. As Jesus approached the disciples to be, he challenged them with a call that was to break with the routine, to see beyond their little self-constructed all, and to try again. Their routine said, we're doing what we've always done, and our nets are empty. We've already started cleaning up. We're going home. But the disciples had the courage to try again, even after their excuses were spoken. I'm too tired. After all, I've been up all night trying to catch something. Nothing seems to be working today. Maybe some other day. Or, what do you know about fishing? I'm the one who makes a living this way. Aren't you a carpenter? But try one more time, they did. And they had unbelievable success. Now this is not to say that we will always have success, but it means that new possibilities open up when we are freed from the prisons that our routines have established. Listen to your own excuses that become barriers to taking action. My plate is too full. I'm too old. I'm too young. I've been there, done that, got the t-shirt. I don't know how. And I'm sure you can add to the list, but whatever the reason is, the danger is that they imprison us from taking these steps that will open up tomorrow. The disciples had to be open to the suggestion to try again, as difficult as it was to accept. They had to be willing to listen in order to hear the call to go and fish for people. Now, I don't want to say that the only way to follow Jesus is to drop everything and go to school and become a pastor, because that's not it. Not everyone is called to go off to seminary. Not everyone is called to spend time with children as a teacher, school administrator, or daycare provider. Not everyone is called to farm, to grow and tend crops and animals. Not everyone is called to drive semi-truck across the country. Not everyone is called to be a plumber or an electrician. Not everyone is called to stock shelves or cook food for customers. We are not called to the same thing, but rest assured, God calls us all. And at times we may think, I'm not qualified for this, I'm not qualified for that. I don't have the training. Insert your excuse here. God doesn't call the qualified, God qualifies the called. We have been given the tools we needed to follow Jesus, to serve as his disciples in this place and in this time. Today, we celebrate our graduating senior. It's an exciting time in life, the closing of this chapter and the beginning of another one. And Maddie, I'm sure you've heard the questions, so what's next? What's your plan after graduation? Where are you going? Whatever those answers may be, know that God is with you. No matter where you go and no matter what you do, God goes before you, God is with you, and you will always have a home here. So what is God calling us to do? Where is God calling us? How is God calling us? What's next? What's our plan after we have found that rest and renewal? As a community of Christ, we are called to grow in our faith. We are to tell people about the amazing love of Jesus Christ. This is part of our sabbatical theme. We rest, we are renewed, and then we are called to follow Jesus. And it doesn't necessarily mean moving, although sometimes it does. We are called to learn more about the loving relationship we have with God and to share that with the people we meet through prayer and study, mission and fellowship. This learning and growing doesn't stop because you've been baptized, because you've been given a Bible, been confirmed, 
celebrated a high school or college graduation, joined a church, and it doesn't stop when you turn 30, 50, or 100. We should constantly strive to grow in our faith. Remember the words that are said at baptisms. To be a faithful member of this congregation, sharing in its worship and ministry through prayers and gifts, study and service, to fulfill your calling to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. So where do we find that call? Maybe it's sitting in a traffic jam to allow for some patience. Or maybe it's in the still quiet moments of the day. Maybe it is sitting on the shore, washing our nets after a long and exhausting fishing trip. Whatever and wherever that it may be, God doesn't ever stop calling. We need to be open to hearing God's call, even when it is not as clear as we thought it might be. Maybe the particular call you are feeling right now is causing some uncertainty in life. Pray. Pray for guidance, and God will place opportunities for you to be guided. Pray for patience, and God will provide opportunities to be patient. And remember that sometimes we do need to be able to see the forest through the trees. Sometimes we become so fixated on what the grand plans that God has for us are that we don't take time to see the smaller, everyday miracles that we have been blessed with. Though experiences are not always as clear as a voice or a neon sign saying, this is your sign, we are able to look at the experiences that we have had and to look at the people that God has placed in our lives to help guide us in the direction in order that we may proceed on that path with confidence and faith. God's call is all around. Are we listening close enough to hear it? Do we have enough confidence and faith to answer as the disciples did? My prayer is that we have enough grace and confidence and faith to follow that call in our lives, whatever and wherever that call may be knowing that we are faithfully qualified in whatever it is that God calls us to do. Let us pray. Disturb us, Lord, when we are too well pleased with ourselves, when our dreams have come true because we have dreamed too little, when we have arrived safely because we sailed too close to the shore. Help us to hear your voice. Help us to cast our nets into the deep water Give us the courage to follow you and the bravery to live out the calling you have placed on our lives. Amen. Let us stand and sing together hymn number 543, Christ Beside Me.
You may be seated. Natty, you are invited to come forward. to have the Lord's Supper, let us sing our song of preparation, number 776, Let Us Break Bread Together.
Your great love will 
lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Whoa, ho, you are the peace in my troubled sea. In the silence you won't let go. In my questions your truth will hold. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Oh, ho, you are the peace in my troubled sea. Whoa. My lighthouse, my lighthouse, shining in the darkness. I will follow you, oh, oh, oh. my lighthouse, my lighthouse. I will trust the promise. You will carry me safe to shore. Safe to shore. Safe to shore. Safe to shore. I won't fear what tomorrow brings. With each morning, I'll rise and sing. My God's love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Whoa, oh, you are the peace in my troubled sea. You, my lighthouse, my lighthouse, shining in the darkness. I will follow you, oh, my lighthouse, my lighthouse. I will trust the promise. You will carry me safe to shore. Safe to shore. Safe to shore. Safe to shore. Fire before us. You're the brightest. You will lead us through the storms. Fire before us, you're the brightest. You will lead us through the storm. Hey! Fire before us, you're the brightest. You will lead us through the storm. Fire before us, you're the brightest. You will lead us through the storm. My lighthouse, my lighthouse. Shining in the darkness, I will follow you, oh, 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 my lighthouse, my lighthouse. I will trust the promise, you will carry me safe to shore, safe to shore. Amen and amen. Uh, a reminder that you are all invited downstairs for graduation cake and a chance to say hi to Natty. And as we go out, God is calling. Can you hear? Have the confidence and the bravery and the trust to follow that call. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine on you and give you his grace. Grace not to sell yourself short, but grace enough to risk something big for something good. May God take our minds and think through them. May God take our lips and speak through them. May God grant us rest, renewal, and a sense of call to follow Jesus. And may God set our hearts on fire. Alleluia. Amen. Amen.